Okay, so this is section five, uh, first lecture, uh, tw lecture 24 on supervised clustering. So in this lecture, we will focus on uh, introducing what is clustering and what is hierarchical clustering. So in module one, we will focus on just about clustering. So just a kind of recap uh, our nutshells, and then we try to categorize uh, uh, all the machine learning uh, algorithms or uh, the topics using six uh, kind of disentangled uh, factors like data angle, task angle, representation angle, scoring function angle, search angle, and uh, model or parameter, uh, parameter or metric angle. So uh, again, so because this is the last section, so I want to kind of review in the uh, data uh, uh, that variable we covered tabular data and 2D grade uh, imaging type of data and 1D sequential text type of data. So we don't have time to cover graph structure data and set structure data. And uh, with regard to the tasks, so we have finished regression. Uh, we also finished quite some uh, about learning theorems and uh, supervised classification. And we don't have time to cover our graphical models. So in the section five, we will focus on unsupervised model. And uh, we will have one invited speaker to teach us about uh, reinforcement learning. OK, so uh, now let's get started uh, to uh, unsupervised learning. And this uh, section five uh, will focus on mostly on uh, tabular data. OK, so uh, what is unsupervised model? So uh, just roughly speaking, the unsupervised model don't assume there's a target variable as labels. So this is just, just a matrix of feature and um, feature um, sample column versus a feature, a sample row as row and feature as columns. And this is what you have. And you want to learn and my uh, or my patterns from this data. Um, so we learn from this unlabeled and or unannotated data, and we don't have a goal. We don't have a clear target variable to predict. So this is not predictive formulation, and the goal is more pattern. So I want to learn the pattern. Uh, and then there are many different kinds of uh, unsupervised uh, method. Specifically, or the most dominating, it's about the task called clustering. <coughs> And in terms of clustering, it's really just I try to group. And there's nothing uh, fancier at all. Here is I'm trying to group samples. So and then uh, naturally, there's a few questions is, so uh, are there some groups in my current data? And what is what defines a group? And how many groups here? And how do you identify the groups? So for this one, in fact, I mean, your eyes will naturally tell you there are uh, roughly two groups, right? I mean, if we think about it, this natural thinking of two groups, it's based on what? Actually, density, right? So just those groups, those points locate more close to each other and these groups locate more close to each other. And these two groups, the points kind of separated apart from each other. All right, so very heuristic kind of definition is we want to group our big points that data points in the group are more similar or more related to each other compared to those points not in the group. And then we also want to separate our data point to make different group of points are not related or unrelated to each other. So you can think about it more from mathematical thinking is we want to maximize within group similarity and we want to minimize between group similarity. That's just about it. Okay, so uh, so yeah, you can think about the intra cluster distance and minimize, which is the same way to see maximize the within group similarity. Or inter-cluster distance are maximized, which is the same way to say we want to uh, minimize the between-cluster similarity. So always there's this 
similarity view or the distance view, which essentially just equates to sides. Okay, so uh, what is a cluster? So again, I already said, I mean, uh, high intraclass uh, similarity, low intraclass similarity, and this is the most common task for unsupervised learning. But there are some other tasks like dimension reduction, which we don't cover. So uh, this is almost the most heuristic task people start to handle data. Um, so can I group, categorize my document according to topics? Uh, can I identify uh, like maybe proteins have similar functions? Can I uh, group individual uh, persons according to their polit uh, political views? So this is pretty easy, and but it's the most commonly used. And if you think about this, is also matches of how human organized knowledge, right? Human organized knowledge according to groups. And that's this kind of structure is part of how we represent knowledge. So um, yeah, there's another example, like you can group the languages according to their morphological stream patterns. So this is the this is morphology wise more similar. The root node root tokens are almost the same, and the difference is just prefix and suffix. Uh, so there are, um, the, there are a lot of uh, this type of language. Uh, grouping and all species grouping, right? It's a famous evolution tree, and why we are more similar to maybe the gibbons, or um, you know, there's a lot of uh, we are uh, human are more similar to monkeys compared to human to fish, and there's a reason there, right? I mean, because the, we are mammals in terms of how we pass. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of other uh, similarities. Um, but and um, the people also use this idea to cluster uh, the uh, web page search, like in this case, like Jaguar, and it can means a mammal, it can also mean a car brand. And then it's naturally in the ranking retrieval, if you group the two, they are actually two different things, I mean, according to the meaning of the words. And then the other kind is the Yahoo Finance or Yahoo Pages. Yahoo Pages traditionally is a very dominating um, organization of the whole internet web pages, and the whole uh, categorization was manually uh, viewed. So that was before, but now I'm actually it's dominated by uh, Google through uh, automatic group. All right. So uh, what are the major questions for clustering? So the first question is, what do you even mean as a group? And the second question is, what do you even mean one object is similar to the other object? So definition of distance measure or similarities. And then the third is, how do you represent each samples? And then how many clusters? Is it fixed number of clusters or it should automatically be found by the data uh, itself, decided by the data itself? And so roughly, the clustering uh, method can be, uh, they, are, they fall into two bigger groups, the partition-based uh, method or the hierarchical-based uh, method. So, uh, and also the last thing is, how do you even know um, the, um, this my current clustering result is good? So, so my current cluster reaches a certain good solution. How do you tell? and how many clusters to look for, why is that a good number? Okay, so now let's start to define what do you mean a group. So, uh, in fact, um, the clustering is a very subjective action. And so this page may be, uh, it's a little bit too um, uh, unfor informal, but it gives the point is, so you can cluster all those cartoon figures according to uh, their uh, roles, that they're a part of a family or they're part of a school, uh, school employees. You can also uh, partition those cartoon figures according to gender. And it's really difficult to see um, this group is better than that group, right? It really depends on what you care and what do I care the most. And then the next one, it's even more, it's actually a better figure. So I'm trying to cluster those cubes. I mean, how do you even define 
is this a better cube compared to this this cube? This is grouping. So this the left side groups the cubes according to color. The right side groups according to the label, the number, that number, uh, the letter uh, on the cube. Is this a better uh, clustering than the left is better than the right? No, actually you really don't know, right? It all depends on what you care more. And then uh, even more is the next picture, which is kind of funny, but so we see uh, the girl is kind of looks similar to this puppy. And then why? I mean, intuitively you actually know because their hair looks pr pretty similar, the hairstyle. But in the end, clustering is a very philosophical question. And like we said before, how to cluster object, cluster samples, it's not a very, it's not entirely a, a mathematical task. It's a philosophical question. It's about the specific data, about specific application. What do you care the most? So, uh, but, uh, you know, this is not task agnostic, right? Whatever we said, I mean, it depends on you, right? It also depends on the user. <coughs> So maybe this user cares about hairstyle more, the other user cares about species differences more, and there's no way you classify this as similar. So it depends on the end user. But uh, as a method, uh, we just carry uh, a more pragmatic approach is, okay, so let's just assume all the samples can be represented in a vector space. And that's more a numerical vector space. When you're facing this numerical space and you don't, you actually do not know what feature is more important than the other, in that type of situation, what would you do, right? Um, okay, and then let's just use simple metric based similarity definitions to define similarity about samples. So everything after is about just. Let's assume we don't know anything about what the user care, assuming you're given this vector space representation. What do you do? It's more a blind uh, black box type of classroom, just to tell you, okay? And But remember that this is not the best that you can do or you should do because clustering is a very subjective task. All right, question here. Always, whenever performing clustering, be careful. Uh, don't make too uh, conclusive conclusions because the clustering itself, it's, it's very subjective. All right, okay. So uh, now, like, because we don't assume anything, we assume features are equally important, and then that's in a vector space, then we just use a normally defined distance metrics to measure the similarity among points, among samples. So what makes a good distance measure good, right? So normally we want to look for those, um, the four properties. The property like a symmetry, property of self-similarity, property of positive separation and posit uh, the properties of triangular inequality. So let's see why do we care that. So symmetry means AB, the distance among AB is the same as distance as BA. So because you want to avoid, uh, you can claim Alex, it's like Bob, but Bob looks nothing like Alex. So we want to have some, those kind of metrics or distance measure have symmetry properties. And the second property is called self-similarity, which means you, if you do the distance measure of a sample versus itself, it gives distance zero. And this is an important property is, so uh, if this doesn't hold, it's, uh, you, you may have, I mean, Alex looks more like Bob 
than Bob itself. Which is odd, right? If you think about it from a common sense, right? So everything here in the end, trying to make or uh, try to enforce the common sense, common sense properties on the distance measure you create. So if you think about it, you have uh, a lot of domain uh, related maybe distance measure, and then um, if you want to have the generic clustering applied on it. So better check if they follow this four type of properties because this gives you good common sense guarantee uh, in terms of what type of classroom you get. Okay, so then uh, positive separation, if A and B, uh, so A, B equal to zero, distance equal to zero, if and only if A equals to B. Because we want to avoid uh, if two you, you get distance maybe C and D equal to zero, um, but C and D are not the same. Which means what? Which means using this distance measure, there's no way to tell apart C and D. And there's no way. And then uh, triangular inequality, we always know that, right? And this, this is give a good geometrical uh, 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 properties. So. So Alex is more like Bob, and uh, it's and Alex is very like like her, and then you hope the this triangular this is like two step uh, relationship could give you a property, and because A and C uh, distance of A and C and uh, and distance of B and C, so they're all very similar to C A and B. So you want distance of A and B to be smaller than the summation of A and C and B and C to just guarantee the A and B are not too different from each other just because they are both are very similar to A and C. And this is again, it's a common sense, right? This is a common sense property. And you just use mathematical formulations to try to check if my distance measure satisfy that common sense property. So in the end, you can define whatever distance measure you like, right? In, but having this kind of property could Give, uh, could guarantee good properties of the classes uh, that you use a uh, clustering algorithm to generate. Um, again, so then let's give examples of the uh, distance measures satisfied that for property. So normally, and in fact, you can, so they all follow what we learned before, the L1, L2, Linf. So this is the Euclidean distance is the L2 norm, which is just each element, the differences take quadratic and then sum, sum over all the elements and take a square root. That's your Euclidean distance, right? Then uh, the L1 distance, then uh, the l inf distance, they are all under this family called Minkowski metric family. And then just to give you a geometric view, and then the X and Y, uh, the Euclidean distance is geometrically just <coughs> The line connect x and y, and that's the length of that uh, that line is the Euclidean distance, and then the L1 distance is just three plus four, and then L sup distance is just whatever is larger. In this case, four is larger. So it's all very intuitive. It's really just this uh, this triangles, uh, the uh, the right angles are longer. Uh, longer uh, corner, uh, longer corner length, or the direct uh, connected length. So they all follow that four properties. And uh, the classic string distance called Hamming distance, which we already normally learn from our algorithm class, is in fact a um, something called a Manhattan distance. Is uh, it's actually the L1, if your features are binary or symbolic. And then there's another classic distance measure called Pearson correlation, we, which we covered many, many times before, when we talk about correlation uh, among uh, in the feature selection section and also in the uh, Gaussian mixture model. So we had a lot of discussion about Pearson correlation. It's a bounded measure. It's from plus one, uh, it's from minus one to plus one. It's a unit, um, 
It's actually uh, not unit dependent, which, and also the famous cosine distance is a special case of Pearson correlation. Cosine distance measure is really just the Pearson correlation on centered data. So there's no mean x and y, x, y, if there are zero vectors, and this is in fact just a cosine distance. And also, the, there's good reason why they're good, right? So, uh, correlation, Pearson correlation is unit de uh, independent, which means uh, it's it's very well used in especially time series analysis to capture two time series are they correlated with each other? How what are the distance among two time series data? So. In this case, if this GB or this whatever is time series got pushed up in the unit, because when you measure, there's some uh, maybe has uh, on the different scales, and it's pushed up maybe uh, 10 times more on every entries, but the Pearson correlation you calculated with the B versus the A will be still the same because the properties of Pearson correlation. What it really matter, measures is just if X improves, uh, what's the tendency of also a B improve? So it's a good measure because of unit uh, independence property. Uh, great. So this is the end of this module. See you in next module.